Hello there girls and boys, welcome back to the Inner Sanctum, the place where I show you all of my tricks while I pull them off live right in front of you. And today we're going to be continuing with the mix that we've been working on for the last few weeks. And uh, yes, this is the instrumental rock track that we've been working on for, for, for a few days now. But today's session is going to be a little bit different from the previous ones. Why? Because, well, you might have guessed it already, we're going to be dealing with something called reverb. But not only that, I'm going to be doing some shenanigans with the mysterious on dark arts known as parallel mixing. We're going to be applying some parallel compression and we're going to be doing some uh, extra fun stuff regarding that particular uh, style of mixing. Now you might be wondering, what on earth is parallel mixing? Well, I'm going to explain to you right now because it's going to be important and as I said before, we're going to be dealing with that the entirety of, the, of today's session. Parallel mixing means this. You're going to be sending stuff to a previously created um, a stereo bus, also known as an auxiliary track, and you're going to be cranking the living stuff out of that particular processing because you're going to insert there, for example, a compressor, a reverb, or a delay, and you're going to set the dry mix all the way to wet because you want to get the vast majority of your signal being totally obliterated by that. But then you're going to be using your faders to bring that super crushed super compressed or super uh, reverby sound back into the mix and you're going to use the sum of both the dry sound and the overly uh, processed version of the track okay now that we understand that let's hit it and yes here we go welcome back girls and boys to Luke Prex. in front of us we've got the project that i'm going to use to continue with the mix as usual, we're going to give a try and we're going to give a spin to the sound of the song as it is at this point. And just as a quick reminder, I got here my trusty decibel, which is going to, not sorry, decibel, no, adapter metric AB, which we're going to use to make a reference uh, between what we got here and previous versions. Hello, Panke, good to see you here. I hope that you learned something out of this. And we're going to be switching between back and forth, okay? So you know that blue, uh, orange stands for the previous mix, and when you got the blue ball, well, you know that it's going to hurt, but also it means that we're going to be dealing with our mix logic. Right now, we're, gonna, we're not going to be fairing with this. Let's listen to this track as it is right now, and then we're going to begin having fun. Here we go, from the top. Okay, as I was saying uh, in the comment section, I quite like the sound of our uh, low end. It's really controlled and it means that we did a great job in the previous session on which uh, we tackled most of the time the bass and the kick. Got it. We haven't done anything with the drums uh, as far as uh, death. So we're going to begin with death. Let's uh, take a look first at our... Let me bring the... The mixer because we're going to be dealing with the mixer as it is right now. Okay, you got here my uh, UC1 and UF8. I am useful. I am always one controlling everything that happens on the screen with these devices. More on that in a different video or something. But now, let's first uh, take a look at the sound of our snare and let's see what we got. Okay, good. I wanted to confirm that we got uh, our gate inserted and we do have our gate inserted. Let me show you because uh, this is running through a plugin. The almighty, powerful and awesome uh, SSL channel strip. And you got here the dynamics, which is basically our uh, snare being controlled and uh, removing some of the super obnoxious extra sound of the cymbals coming through the microphone that recorded the snare. Okay. 
nothing fancy if you want to know more about that you should check probably session number two i think that's the one that we got uh, rid of that sound here we go now that we got that i'm gonna uh, remove the plugin and we're gonna start to mess around with the aforementioned parallel com parallel mixing i'm gonna be inserting or if i rather say it correctly i'm gonna be actually applying some of the reverb and i will show you how Right now, you will see me moving my fingers around, but it's, this is basically speaking me controlling the sense that we got on this area here, or sometimes you can see it on the on the screen. This is the channel strip that we got for the snare, and you can see that I already have a pre-inserted series of plugins, not plugins, sends, and all of them are taking us to a particular section of the sound or, or a particular section of my mixing uh, template. I will explain that right now. I'm going to show you now my mixer and if everything goes according to the plan, this mixer should be should be seen now. Okay, look at this. Beautiful mess as usual. Logic uh, making a fool out of me. Here we go. There it is. Perfect. So, here it is, Gerson boys. As you can see here, I might need to remove my uh, everything. So, yes and yes. You can see here, Gerson boys, that we got several channels everything that is uh, aura, uh, brown is is my uh, 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 drums uh, poopy brown bass green guitars glorious red lead guitar my old music will deal with that later the summing boss will deal with that later and here is where it begins north and boys everything from rear to white it's a parallel mixing process we got here uh, purple audio 1176 beautiful beautiful and it's said as an stereo pair i will explain to you that later on once we use it because we're going to use it today very important i got my drum compression which is my crush bus i have this uh, beautiful recreation of uh distressor by imperial empirical labs uh, made by the fine people at the slate digitals then we got a crush bus which is destroying using a level lock well sorry david lock then i have a kick and a snare using a, a, a transient designer which is going to push as you can see the attack harder and removing some of the uh, uh, sustain you will see that in action soon then i got a kick snare and bass and you might have guessed it they these these are named after the stuff that i sent to them and this is using a, 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 a Fairchild equivalent made by the fine people at Slate Digital, which is barely doing anything. It's barely compressing, okay? It's just to add color and a little bit of, uh, you'll see, magic, pixie dust. And those are my orange uh, channels. That's I have them color-coded because those represent dynamics. These are just, uh, how can I put it? Just compressors, different uh, variations of those compression circuits. Then we got my blue which stands for basically reverbs. Then we got our, uh, I don't know, seafoam green, and those are reverbs, and those are delay. And then we got our modulation stuff, which is orange, uh, purple, okay? Simple as that. For today's session, I think that most of the time we're gonna be dealing with the orange and the uh, blue, okay? So first, what are we gonna do now? You can see over here that we got all of our a sense already pre-installed on some of my channels we usually begin or well, i put i should put it this way i usually begin by working with my sense for my uh, drums first so we're going to be dealing with the uh, dynamics first okay which to do first i will uh, start with my drum compression my 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 summing my sum my uh, parallel bus uh, summing okay i'm gonna show you that everything is already sent every single one of the channels that corresponds or can confirms the sound of my drums are already been sent to the decomp which is sorry about that which is here and i'm gonna be moving it up and down because since everything is already been sent i can basically speaking just uh just push this guy up and down and we can actually start to see a difference 
Yeah, thank you, thank you. Exactly. Chat color codes versus virgin, all red uh, color channels. Usually in Logic, they come in blue, but you're right. I totally agree with you. So let's press play, and you'll see how the, ch the sound of our drums are gonna, is going to change dramatically by the movement of this fader. Okay, here we go. Isn't that awesome? Can you tell the difference? Of course, we got that tiny bump in volume because of the added sound being summed to the sound of our uh, uh, of our drums. But it was awesome. We got a much more tighter sound, a much more powerful drum sound, and all because of this little guy over here, girls and boys. Feel free to take a snapshot of this because this is a great, great uh, setting that I came up with for my uh, parallel mixing. Okay, awesome. Now, what am I doing? Well, I, I set this guy to ob to obliterate the sound coming in. It's basically destroying everything. See how, how aggressive it is. I'm, I, I have it set to nuke. <laughs> and uh, the input is quite uh, hard. Yeah, the attack is basically immediate and the release is super short. Why? It's super slow, sorry. Why? Because I want to squash everything and keep everything as compressed and for as uh, compressed for as long as possible. That's why we got a super slow release and a super fast attack. Okay? And why? Because that way we're pushing the vibe harder. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense to you, girls and boys. Now I'm gonna bring back the fader again and let's find the sweet spot for it. Because right now I lost track of what I was doing because I was explaining to you. Okay, here we go. Good. This is kind of tricky for some boys because it's addictive. As soon as you start to bring it in, you start to feel more excitement, more... Uh, well, the drums are pumping harder, right? So if you are not careful, you can actually overdo it. And there is always uh, such a thing as too much of a good thing. And see, we are barely adding uh, that parallel uh, setup and still we're getting a gigantic bump in awesomeness. Great. Now let's take a look at the second uh, series of uh, of um, parallel compression, and we got here now our crush bus. And as you can see, it's always set by default on the on the summing on my mixing template as bypassed. Why is that? Because the crush is basically extra noise, but it, it's a good kind of noise. Sometimes I like it on certain elements, sometimes sometimes I don't like it on many things. But why is it always there, you might be wondering, and that's a great question, I'm glad that you didn't ask. It's because it always comes in handy. You won't, really have, you won't believe how many times this guy has saved a snare drums. And we're going to be using it for my snare right now. And maybe, just maybe, for my room. And look at this, everything is already set to be all the way up. And it's always as a post fader, which means that everything that I do here is gonna be affected, is gonna be, a, is gonna be affecting the amount of information being sent to our uh, bus. So this will react to our uh, volume on the main sound. Why is that so important? Since the whole point of this uh, it's to increase or add a little bit of mojo and a little bit of vibe to the sound of our snare, for example. 
It would be stupid if the snare has to go down in volume because of a dynamic uh, section and we still have this blasting sound coming from the parallel mixing uh, process. You can see the picture now, right? Okay. That's why it's so important to have different uh, uh, the post and pre fader. You gotta be intelligent on when to use it. If you want to know more about that, let me know in the in the comment section because it's actually quite important. Now, let's hit it. I'm gonna go back to my uh, the uh, my my parallel section, and we're gonna be dealing now with the crush. I'm gonna select it so you ha you can you can have a, an idea. And remember, we are just sending two different sounds: the snare and the overhead and the and the and the room. Here we go. Awesome, right? And again, obviously we're getting a bump in volume, but that's the whole point. We're adding like a reinforcement to the sound of our snare. Let me show you what we're doing here. This is David Luck, and it's set to uh, moderately apply some stuff. And actually, this guy is not set by default as fully wet. Why? Because I like to have a little bit of control and a little bit of the of the what's the name of the original sound as part of the parallel. But let's crank it up all the way up and see what we can get because it's gonna now start to crush everything. This is super, super dramatic. Here we go. Way better than before, right? Obviously, because we're now dealing with a fully wet mix. This is a cool, cool, cool uh, sound because it's uh, adding noise. You can see that it's kind of super overblown. I'm gonna crank it up, uh, and just to, for you to see, let me see if we can play it back by. Ear. Of course not, because we are feeding this guy with a synth. So I'm gonna unsolo it, but I'm gonna bring it up little by little, and you will hear clearly the effect of this uh, David Locke. Here we go. Way too harsh, way too overloaded, way too much. But if I back it off and find the sweet spot, we're gonna make the sound of our snare tighter and also we're gonna add a little bit of vibe to the sound of the room since we're sending the room as well. I like what it's doing on the snare, but the room is a little bit too on the nose. Let's take a look at the room. We got this guy here. We got two options. I can lower the volume of the room by just lowering the fader. And since our uh, parallel mix is being affected by the amount of uh, sand that we have, uh, uh, by the volume of the room itself on the fader, we can address that just by lowering this guy. Or I can simply back off this the amount of information being sent to the set to the crush bus and we can also get a uh, result which one is the best i think that for now i'm going to back off the amount of uh, information being sent uh, from the room because i think that i had a good sweet spot here okay uh, when it comes to the volume for my room here we go let's see what we got And for those of you who might be wondering, why uh, can I control the sense with my UC1? Yes, you can, UF8. Just let me show you. We got right now set here uh, the UC1, 
uh, to control the scent of the decamp, but I don't want that. I want to control the crush. I got it now by by clicking by pressing on this on this uh, uh, on this path, and then I'm gonna set the encoder to be instead of selecting or moving the changing the channel the synth, I will set it to control the gain and look at that. Uh, so let's do it manually again. Here we go. Nice, I like it a lot. From here, let's um, let's see what we can do with my thumbs. My thumbs are a bit uh, lost, and they could use a little bit of extra punchiness. Let me see if by sending them to the crush, we can push them a little bit higher. Just turn them on, and let's see. But let's find a section on which the thumbs are part of the sound, right? Let me go back to the arrangement window. There it is. Let's get to the thumbs. Here it is. Let's give it a look. Awesome, right? Now we got a much more, uh, not louder, but more present uh, thumb sound without destroying the uh, gain stage of our track. And just for fun, let's compare it to the starting point of this mix. Let me just get rid of the mixer. Here we go, girls and boys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to my, uh, my trusty friend, the Nth. And as usual, we're just gonna be switching back and forth, okay? Blue, uh, orange stands for the uh, starting point. Blue stands for what we've been doing so far in the last few minutes. Here we go. Okay, I think that the difference is quite obvious, don't you think? Uh, I had to level match it uh, once I give it a try, gave it a try first, because uh, we got that slight bumping volume uh, out of the parallel compression thing that we did on the drums, obviously, right? But we also got a much tighter, much defined, and much more powerful and kicking uh, kick drum sound, pun totally not intended and uh, the result is to it's totally palpable. Now, uh, when it comes to the thumbs, the thumbs well, they are clearer now, they are much more present, and also we got a um, much more exciting sound on our room, don't you think? That's the power of parallel mixing for, to you girls, for you girls and boys. Now, let's continue. I'm gonna take a look now at the reverb side of things, because, now you know what, I'm gonna take a look at our extra parallel uh, circuits because even though we got a much better sounding uh, snare and kick we can make it sound even bigger and larger than life and these being rock music snare and kick are super important okay so you can take a look over here some boys and you can see that we got our key s and key sb uh, bosses those are gonna be the next step in our journey i'm gonna turn on these guys over here as well on my uh, uh, snare sound. Why? Because I'm gonna push it further. We already, we're gonna be doing exactly the same as we did before. Since everything is already being sent, I'm just gonna bring up the faders and I already showed you the those channels, those tracks. We're gonna be dealing with KS and KSB right now, okay? These two guys. And yes, they are visible. I'm gonna select them just for you to have uh, a visual cue. Those two guys are gonna be the ones that we're gonna be dealing with. Here we go, girls and boys.
Wow! And see how little I applied. It's a matter of taste, girls and boys, and it's also a matter of uh, knowing when to stop. You saw that we got a, especially on the kick drum, it sounds a little bit more rounder, a little bit more uh, low endy, yet controlled, and our snare is cutting through the mix easily. And do I have to remind you that we haven't done any form of equalization to that sound? Cool, right? Now, and I already showed you, they are uh, a super aggressive uh, transient designer, increasing the attack and, re and removing the, the sustain of the kick and the snare. And a little bit of glue coming from the Moe machine that is known as a fresh child. Just like that. Okay? Now, let's add some ambience because this is the most important element uh, or the most important application for any... Uh, what's the name? Any, any, any uh, recorded kind of music. Which is having the making this making the illusion of this being performed somewhere, okay? And what and why do we do that? This is going to be important, so I'm going to have to go bigger. You see, girls and boys, this whole business about making records it's a smoke and mirrors. And why do I always refer to this as as such? It's because of this. When you are making music, you are uh, creating a piece of art that it's super driven by emotion. And half of that emotion comes from the performance of the artist doing his craft. The issue with recorded music is that we don't have, we lose half of the equation, because regardless of how beautiful the song is, if you don't have the emotional impact that comes from the performance of the artist, even the gestures, the, the way that he behaves on the stage, it's ridiculously important. And it's half of the deal. We don't have that when we listen to a record, all for these reasons. But we got the best next, next thing, which is creating and conveying that emotion through artificial methods, which is mixing. That's actually the whole point, and that's the actual definition of what mixing music actually is. We're trying to recreate the emotional impact of the sound of music being performed live, live by uh, artificial methods such as uh, making the sound of our drums puncture, larger than life, more exciting, and applying this uh, uh, next step, which is reverb. And what's the role for reverb? reverb? Reverb is basically a tool that we have access to as mixers to convey the illusion of music being performed inside of our room. But also, we can also use it to create an emotional impact. For example, creating a gigantic reverb tail, doing some uh, uh, some some throws. Uh, I will show you that, uh, pro n not in this mix, but later on, uh, to add certain elements of excitement to particular sections. For example, let's say that we got a soaring guitar solo, and at the end, we want the guitar to go to heaven. Well, we just increase a ridiculous amount of reverb on the guitar to make it sound like cavernous, but giving the impression that it's f uh, backing off and going uh, right where it belongs, besides God. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm kind of biased when it comes to guitars, but you get the point. Now let's do it. Here we go, girls and boys. Coming back to Logic, I'm going to be first sending uh, some of my uh, sounds to the hall, and now we're going to be uh, stepping away from the sound of the drums, and we're going to start to hit our rest of the instrumentation, because we're going to be doing the first thing, which is sending and making the illusion of uh, music being performed inside of a room and making the illusion of everybody playing, to, playing together. I usually have this amount of reverb. Yeah, or some ways, I am always rocking five reverbs on all of my mixes. Why? Because I use one to create the illusion of height, I use one to create the illusion of size, and I, and I have one for my snare, just for my snare, one just for my tones, and just one for my vocals. Yeah. And then we're going to be doing it right now. We're going to be first creating the illusion of a space by playing around with the plate and the hole. We're going to be using uh, this guy. This is part of my default setup. Great, great verb suit classics. And lustrous plate by uh, these guys as well. Liquid Sonic, amazing, amazing, amazing plate reader. Okay, here we go, girls and boys. So we're going back to our instruments because you'll see that in here we won't be doing it as I did it before just by cranking up we're gonna be doing actually uh, we're gonna be sending the stuff on the spot uh, and controlling the amount of uh, the the synth okay 
One of the benefits of having the juicy one is that I can actually just use my feathers to send stuff. So I'm going to be sending first the sound of my snare to the hole. No, you know what? I'm going to be doing it first with my rooms and overheads because those are the most uh, indirect uh, microphones that we got. And that's going to give us a much, a much better representation of the sound. Okay. Right now I set my UC1 to be sent uh, to send the stuff, uh, a copy of my signal or to send to feed the bus that has houses the reverb using my encoders. But by pressing this, I now flipped the control and I allowed the faders to control the send. See what happens. And benefit of that, I can actually send multiple, uh, cop multiple instruments to the send. So let's do it. Just that. Could you hear the tiny release tail? That's what we want. And you, you saw me uh, muting the sense. That's super important, Carson Boys, because we are not trying to do something uh, artistic with this reverb. We are just adding vibe and mojo, okay? Just creating some form of ambient sound. I'm gonna apply now the plate. And yes, I am doing it using the same method, Carson Boys. And we're going to be sending stuff just for you to see. Yeah, it's there. And I usually crank up the synth all the way up uh, because I want to see what on earth is this reverb doing. So here we go. Perfect. That's what it is. Let me show you the the parameters that we have at, at our uh, what that we are using on our reverb units. This is a Bersit Classics, and it's the one that I'm using, or I like to use as a default on my template. I usually change it, but this is a great starting point. I think I like this one for this mix because it's just adding a little bit of that renowned Genesis one. Nothing fancy. Let me see if I can actually listen to this one. Just, just creating that uh, uh, extra roominess because that's actually its its whole point is creating this kind of hull sound. That's what the name of the reverb circuit is. Now let's check the the plate. This guy, it's loose through plates again, again, and let me show you how it sounds like. It has a longer decay time because the, this is actually giving us the sense of dimension. As I said before, the hole is just to create like some, some sort of ceiling and the plate is to create this kind of size. In context, Sorry, I just forgot that I got this to be controlling the, <laughs> the sense, so it did nothing. Let me just confirm that this is going to be now muting. Yeah, okay. Here we go again. I'm going to press play. I'm gonna, we're going to listen to the track in context, and then I'm going to remove both uh, reverbs. It 
a tiny difference, but it's it's something that you feel. It's not necessarily something that you hear. And that's the whole point. This is what I wanted to do with this. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to you, Gerson boys. Now let's apply this uh, those sounds or that reverb to our guitars. They are super, super dependent on that, girls and boys. Because even though they are guitars, they are supposed to be playing to be playing with the drums in the same stage, on the same stage. So we're gonna apply them. We're gonna do it one by one. We're gonna be first adding the whole reverb, and you can see here that I already have, as I did before, the sound of our reverbs. Uh, or the synth to our reverb circuits already uh, inserted as part of the default uh, settings of this template. So we're going to be adding those sounds right away. First, I'm going to solo the guitars because that way you will be able to hear it uh, in an easier fashion. Here we go. First hole. When I did it solo, it wasn't that uh, visible, right? It wasn't as noticeable as it got once I brought back the rest of the mix. That was a gigantic bump on everything, right? It was a little bit more lively, lively uh, a little bit more interesting, and it felt closer to what a record sounds like. Now let's do the same with the plate reverb, girls and boys. Here we go. Solo first. And just uh, for the lulls, I'm going to mute I'm going to cut the synth of our uh, whole reverb as it is right now, and I'm going to ascend the... so that way we can only hear the sound of our plate. Here we go. Pretty happy with the results for some boys. This sounds great. And again, though I have to remind you that we haven't done anything to our equalization on, in, on an individual basis. Woof! Good, right? Now let's mess around with our bass guitar, girls and boys. Here we got it in all its glorious uh, bassiness. And it also has, as you can see, an extra another, yet another, uh, parallel mixing circuit. And this is gonna be our rear, this guy. And it's been, it's fitting this gigantic, glorious, and actually great plugin, I was impressed when I used it for the first time. Uh, 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 recreation of a 1176 uh, kind of circuit, this is the MC77 by Purple Audio, and it's a good, 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 uh, I think it's my favorite 1176 equivalent in plugin fashion so far. Yeah, that's a big, a big statement. Okay, we're going to be sending, for now, the sound of our bass to that uh, bus, and you'll see how it becomes bigger and better, just by cranking it up. Here we go. Big difference, right? It's just adding that extra oomph to the sound of the bass that helps the whole thing feel a little bit more uh, glued together and better in general. Good. Now let's do an extra trick on our guitars, or some boys. You'll see that we got over here on our guitars this guy called White. What on earth is that? Okay, let me show you. This is actually a channel, uh, a, cha a chain of plugins that I have inserted on our 
on that on that uh, on the white. Uh, yeah, you can see me. You can see it. Okay, so I'm gonna remove my face. There is. We got it here, girls and boys. We got uh, this series of plugins. We got here first Saturator, which is set as uh, bypass by default because I use it depending on the kind of uh, source material. Then little micro pitch, and micro pitch is basically doing the the um, how can I put it the dimension the, the thing, which is basically a super glorified chorus that it's really really nice sounding. And then I got this guy. A stereo spread uh, spect uh, uh, um, what's the name? Uh, plugin. Okay. I usually have it uh, set as as it is right now. Just this is just, this is just the default. But I once I once begin with my mix, I start to crank it up a little bit. You'll see why. Okay. So here we go, girls and boys. We're gonna remove this, and I'm gonna just bring up the fader because my guitar is already sending everything. All the way up and as you can see we got that gigantic difference in here it's not set to be post fader it's actually pre fader which means that it it won't be affected by this important because this is uh, a usually uh, usually it also stays where they are most of the time and it's better to have uh, the sound always rely always consistent because you are gonna be applying this most of the time to the sound of our uh, rhythm guitars okay here we go How about that? Isn't that cool? We are making the sound of our guitars to be more aggressive and again, we haven't done anything on the equalization of the rest of the instruments. But we got a better sounding stereo field and the guitars are great. Let me show you the guitars with and then without the, the sand, okay? Here we go. not super super present and i hope that you're listening to this using your your, your best stereo pair of uh, speakers or your best uh, headphones because this is something that makes a difference it's about it's a matter of vibe let's see what happens when i bring back the rest of the mix and i remove again the sound of our synth It makes the, the the feel and the size, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, of the overall mix to be a little bit wimpier, don't you think? It's not as, mm, uh, as powerful as it is right now. Again, let's go back uh, just for the fun of it and compare it to the original uh, starting point, okay? We have access to our adapter metric AV over here, so it's gonna be easy. I'm gonna just make sure that we got a volume compensated uh, version. Here we go, girls and boys. Wow, right? And look, this is not about great sound. This is about 
vibe and emotion. And we're already getting a ridiculously vibey sound just by pushing some feathers. But what a dramatic change this thing has brought to the, to the mix, right? Remember that we're just adding compression, that copious amount of it, okay, to different uh, sounds, to the different uh, uh, instruments. But the thing is that we're applying the right amount of compression and we're bringing in uh, the right amount of that compression. That's the whole point of parallel mixing. It's one of the most uh, difficult, uh, how can I put it? It's one of the most difficult to acquire skills that a mixer has to have because we are actually creating a, and conveying an emotion and it's setting a stage that will allow us to mix uh, better. Why? Because we're going to be enjoying the sound of it rather than fighting. Because most of the time we're, uh, especially me, when I was uh, starting with this whole mixing rig, gig, uh, I always, uh, I was most of the time concerned with my mix not sounding like a record. And it was because I was trying to make it uh, sound uh, like a record, wrongly, by equal equalizing everything, trying to match the sound of the of the individual instruments. When in reality, what I should be aiming to get is matching the emotion. That's the whole point. Once you understand that principle, everything is going to change for you as a mixer. And we're doing it right now. Okay. Now let me see. Because depending on how, how much time we got, we, we got 10 minutes before we finish. So um, what can we do? Let's apply some reverb to the toms. I'm going to go back to our arrangement window. And yeah, thank you very much. Let's take a look at the section where most, uh, where most of the toms happens. And I think it's here. Can you see it? Yeah, you got it. It's here. So, this is going to be what we're going to be dealing with right now. I'm going to solo my thumbs. Just let me take a look at uh, Let me comp control my whole thing here. I'm going to solo the sound of my thumbs. And let's take a look at them. You might remember that we have the hole and the plate, the plate sound of, on our thumbs on our drums, but I didn't apply that to our toms. We're only sending the hole and the plate to... Uh, 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 we're applying only that to our indirect microphones. We are still yet to apply it to our snare and our toms. We're going to do it first on our... You know what? I'm going to just do it on the on the toms a tiny bit. I'm going to press play, girls and boys, and again, I'm going to be controlling everything from my you see one, and yeah, just for you to confirm it, yes, there it is. We're going to be sending first thumb one. In here we got to be quite careful because we shouldn't be sending that much information. Why? Because we got the entirety of the mix uh, to, to uh, uh, playing alongside the, the dumb itself. But also, remember that we're already sending a lot of reverb coming from the indirect microphones, the rooms and the overheads. So we shouldn't overdo this. We're just creating and conveying the sense of space. On the thumbs, we'll use the specialized thumb reverb for the super boom, metallica-like uh, sound. So we're just gonna try to make the thumbs feel a bit more closer to the sound of the rest of the of the kit. Nice. Let's do that. Uh, now let's apply a little bit of the larger than life plate reverb. simple but here's the big one we're gonna apply the specialist the specialized uh, reverb circuit that we got for our thumbs and let me introduce you to it 
here it is. We're going to be using a different sound, a different kind of plate. But you know what? I'm going to do something a little bit more uh, outrageous. I tried this guy before on a different mix, and that blew me away like there was no tomorrow. Fever by Eventide. This is a really, 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 really cool. This is not T Burp. Okay, my computer is struggling with loading the plugin. Hopefully, what? Well, yeah, perfect. There it is. This is uh, coming from uh, the productions of Heroes by David Bowie, one of the best records ever. And it sounds amazing and it sounds supernatural because it was full of really good shenanigans. Basically speaking, this is uh, uh, using two different microphones to recreate, to capture the reverberations coming from a ridiculously big. Uh, uh, sounding um, uh, hotel, which was used to record certain elements of the of the of the album, and uh, it has gates, so it's gonna keep uh, everything clamped until the sound reaches a certain level. So let's take a look at it. Okay, what I did there was just making sure that the only sound that triggers the tom, the, the reverb is the tom itself, because we got some bleeding uh, coming from the snare, not a problem. But if we can control it, uh, uh, it's always it's always the best. Now let's apply a little bit of uh, reverb. We're gonna move the microphones around, and let's see what we can get. Wow, <laughs> I'm excited. Let's see what we get out of this. Here we go. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna send uh, some of the, the other toms as well. Let's see what we get. Should I have to say anything else? This is awesome! Wow! I love this plugin, this is awesome! I totally recommend you to get this guy! We got the toms, now let's deal with the snare. Here we go. We got another instance of Burp Suite Classics, but I got here a plate reverb, but it's, uh, it's using an actual preset. And it sounds like this. First, let's confirm that we're sending the snare correctly. We're not. Why? Because I usually apply those uh, reverbs to the sound of our uh, of my sample. This time around, we don't have a, a snare sample because I was lazy enough not to create my sample. And no, I and yes, I usually create my own samples depending on the production. So we're gonna select our S verb, which is stands for snare reverb, and we're gonna send it. Mm, yes, post fader, and we're gonna send it to taste. Let me just select this guy. Here we go.
Give me a second, I gotta remember where we are. Awesome. But let's uh, make it a little bit uh, larger than life, a little bit 80s. So we're going to increase the decay time a little bit longer. And I will keep the equalizer as it is because I like it. Let's see. Wow, love it, love it, girls and boys. So just as a recap, because we're finally reaching the final stage of this uh, broadcast, let's compare the entirety of the mix against the first iteration of this. Here we go, girls and boys. Remember, Blue Balls stands for uh, what we've been doing so far. Orange stands for the starting point of this mix. Here we go. Girls and boys, what a big difference, right? Hopefully, you got an idea of what I always mean with parallel mixing and why it's so important and why I consider it to be one of the most important assets that any mixer should have access to. This is about making vibe, uh, uh, making our sound uh, to be a little bit more interesting, a little bit more vibey, a little bit more uh, less pedestrian, to put it in a way, and to make it a little bit more uh, record like. And again, we haven't touched any equalizer other than the stereo bus. So, overall, uh, this is a great, great session. I'm quite happy with today's results, girls and boys. Hopefully, you got something out of this. If you got any question, don't miss the chance of asking anything on the comment section down below, so you can, uh, I can, I can find a way to address any of your questions. And of course, uh, I encourage you to watch this every single time that I'm doing it live because it's easier for me to answer questions on the spot than it is coming back to the, to the comments. Okay, so I will see you next week. And before we go, let me remind you that if you like to support this channel, the best way to do it is by listening through music on Apple Music or Spotify, and also by following us on social media, such as Instagram. Let me try to find, yeah, there is. Uh, because uh, that's the best way for you to get in touch with us in a much more personal basis. Now, girls and boys, as every single time that I meet you, I gotta remind you something. Never, ever, ever let anybody tell you what to dream about. And remember, that it was you when it's here. <laughs>